It's so great, man. You know? I just get secondhand high. I just start. I just, I just pass out. <laughs> and I just keep talking. Man, it must be crazy to work. Ah, oh, man. So, so your podcast is just me knocked out. Like that guy was. Uh, very you stealth. get recognized in the streets sometimes. Sometimes, some not like. Is it still your stand up? Because you're in Toronto. If you guys, I mean, if, I'm sure if you're in Toronto, it's still about your stand up. I actually called someone today to book a venue for September 5th, and the guy was. I go. Uh, I was like, hi. I'm, um, he said his name first, and I introduced my stuff. I don't know why I said my name is Dave Maresh. And he goes, so I'm talking to him. I go, what's your rate and stuff? And he goes, hey, he goes, he goes, I, Dave. I go, yeah. He goes, yeah, I know who you are. I was like, oh, and I got flustered. I go, and I almost went, how? And he goes, but he saw me at the lot. He used to own the lot. The lot. The lot. Yeah. The original corner. Exactly. People don't remember that. Yeah. People so don't remember the lot was the original corner. He was the guy. But that's like... That was a weird one because I was like trying to sell him on doing a show. You know what I mean? Like being all professional. Like I even like spoke. I didn't speak how I normally would speak. And then he goes, I know who you are. And you I, can't I, fool me, you fuck. Yeah, he goes. <laughs> okay, man, fuck. I'm sure we're rolling, aren't we? We're rolling. We're rolling with a spe with an ultra special guest today, okay? Ultra special fucking guest. Not only am I, am I having this guy as a guest as a stand-up comedian, but now he's like a fucking accomplished actor. Uh, our guest today is the multi Just for Laughs appearing, multi TV appearances across the board in Canada and now internationally with his show on Hulu. Uh, you can catch him on Ra uh, Rami. I almost called it Rami because I'm white when we were talking about that. Yeah. Give it up for, <laughs> for the one and only Dave Merhaj, everybody. Everybody at home, clap, make some noise. All my fans. They Do know. I get to? I, I can, can clap. clap. Yeah, I clap, dude. I clap. You get I excited. give it up. Man, okay, so everybody who's, man, if you don't know, this guy is one of the more successful Canadian comics we've had come out of Canada in the last few years. Not only is he a uh, stand-up comedian, like, who has made it, but now he's starting to make it in the acting world, which is this, the next level of difficulty sometimes a lot of people will look at. And uh, you, you're making the transition seamlessly, bro. So what the fuck's it been like? Where are you living right now, L.A. or New York? I live in L.A. now, Silver yeah, I live Lake. live in L.A. Live. I start giving you, I give you my address. You ever do that where you get too excited? You're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apartment six. I have one parking spot. Oh, man. Sunset <laughs> Street. Man, you live in L.A. Or would you consider yourself an L.A. comic? Uh, I just, I used to live there in 2015 and 16. And then I moved to New York for two years. And then I'm back in L.A. So I, I don't, I don't, wouldn't consider myself an L.A. comic Ooh, just yet. Because I haven't, I haven't put in my time. I don't know if there is. I don't know when you can put in your time. I don't know what their time is. No, there is so, none. You know, to be like. if you became really famous tomorrow, then you've already put in your time. That's it. Put they in my time, yeah. Time. <laughs> but if you're not famous, then you have, you're never going to be able to put in your time. No, and I moved during the pandemic there. <laughs> so I didn't even get a. That's I a very Dave Merhaj yeah, move Yeah, yeah, that is do. a very Dave. If Dave anybody Merhage. knows you personally, as a Dave move. To be that's like, what, yeah, move yeah. in L.A. That's what uh, a mutual friend of ours, Alex Pavone, very funny comic, said. He goes, of course, because I was in a group chat. <laughs> With him, Nathan McIntosh and Julio Gararate, all comics. That's a lot of energy. It's a lot of energy. And I go, I'm moving during the pandemic. And they were all like, yep, that's something you would do. <laughs> Dave, everybody's going home. Dave, we're all going home. No, I, no, I'm going to LA. I'm going to find myself a cozy spot. Yeah. I just kind of planned like that it was going to be a wrap for a while. And then, you know, Canada start to start to show that it, it, it's a boss country. You moved. You're one of the comics who moved. Yeah. You left the Canadian comedy scene, arguably at your Canadian comedy peak, which is a lot of people do. You've gotten a lot of the stuff. Everybody knows who you are. You're like, okay, I'm going to go see if I can chase the American opportunities. And you got there and you got a bunch. Um, what's that? Okay, man. For anybody listening, the star system in this country is broken, obviously. And everybody knows it. So we all chase this American comedy yeah. dream, the big one there. Yeah. So where did you first go when you left Toronto? I was like, I had a temporary green card, so I was like visiting L.A. Because I always wanted to go to L.A. since I was like maybe a younger kid. I, I don't know. Of course, know. bro, that dream, bro. I know what you're saying, man. Yeah, I don't even, I don't know. I don't think I was eight years old and I was like, Mom, I want to go to L.A. I don't know if that happened. That would be funny, I guess. Do um, you like West Coast rap more? No, wow. probably not. Like, I mean, like as a coast, as an artist, yeah, like I, I prefer Kendrick Lamar. And, you know, so in these West Coast, but I, I don't really, it's not really. Now my favorite is like Toronto rap. Uh, I know. Like, which I didn't think would happen. Um, okay, but right now on the world stage, it's one of the biggest, like, it's probably the biggest rap uh, 
mecca right now with everybody coming out. I, I, I'm going to come back to something quick. Yeah. So you moved to LA. Yeah, and, and then I got my green card in 2016. I actually got my green card mailed on Canada Day. Oh, nice. I remember it was in LA and it was came in at Canada Day. I was with another comic named uh, Daniel... Uh, Daniel, uh, what's his name? Uh, Danny Martinello. Danny he was Martinello. visiting, oh, yeah, and yeah. and I had like a desk that I couldn't put together, and uh, and Danny's like, "What's with this?" I go, "I can't put it together, bro." He goes, nah, "I could do it," and I'm like, and then I he just I let him do it, and then he goes, "I'm like, well, you do this usually?" He goes, "Man, I build desks. I know how to build this shit," and he built it so fast. <laughs> How long had you had the table there for? Bro, probably for weeks. <laughs> it was like it was like a disaster. Uh, so he, so then I got the green card, and it was like right before. Well, I think it was yeah. Trump hadn't been elected yet. It was oh like months, God. months. So I got it, and then I, um, I was living there. I had I was living there, but I now I had a full green card. What so that, that was 2015, like? 2016. What's that? What's that feel like? Tell us from a personal thing. Dave Mahaj opens up the mail. Boom! There it is. Finally, my okay to live here, work here. I felt very, very happy because I had like before that, before that, it was just the money. And then I remember the the lawyer I had, it was like sometimes like a struggle because like I didn't understand most of the lingo. I had to get all this information. And there was a, a lady named Amanda who helped me so much. She gathered all the information and put it together in a proper form to yeah. be presented. So I owe her a lot. But um, I remember when I paid, when I, he was like, now you got to pay me and He's, I'm like, oh, I got to go to a bank. He goes, there's one around here. And then he's like, my secretary will go with you. She has to do something at the bank. So we're both like in the line. And then we both go to the teller, but separate tellers. And I uh, I need to pull this much money out. And then I just turned around and gave, <laughs> gave her the money at the other. like. And then she goes, where do you want me to drop you off? I go, ah, yeah, this bus stop. <laughs> yeah, this bus. That's fucking hilarious. It was like so uh, like uh, not. It was just so hilarious because I'm like, man, I just emptied out ten thousand dollars. I was gonna bring that up, okay? People yeah. who don't work in, in the in the industry, you don't know, but it costs about ten thousand dollars in lawyers' fees uh, to get your green card to move to the states. It, yeah, it, well, with total, it probably cost me more because I had to pay the other lady to help me. So that was like maybe like over a thousand dollars, and then I had and I had to get a. a uh, uh, temporary green card, which costs five hundred, then I had to renew it, and that was another five hundred. So I think, what, to answer your question fully, when I did get it, it was just a sense of relief because I had gone through all this whole process, and I didn't know if I was going to get it. And then getting it, I felt great. I felt, I felt like okay, now I can really like calm my stresses down and my anxiety. What's some of the big struggles that you go through? What is the, what's the hurdles, bro? Like, uh, I mean, you, you're trying to go to America. America always seems like they don't want nobody going in their fucking country. Um, like what are my struggles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I guess like miss, you know, you get used to a certain scene or like I got used to Toronto and then all your friends are here. You're like close, you were close like the top, bro, yeah. You were like top of the chain, bro. You were walking to any room yeah. in this country, drop a, everybody would instantly give you some time. You really didn't have to book too much. You could, you could cancel and nobody's going to say shit because they're just yeah. happy to have you on the show. Uh, man, you, you, you don't, you don't get that when you go to LA and New York. Obviously, we already know how the industry works. It's not that you start from the bottom, but you start from the outsider's middle. They know that yeah. you're a good comic, but they're still not going to book you all it's the time. It's not going to book you all the time. So it was more of, it was that actually, yeah. sorry, to the, the killing off your own ego, which is like, you know, <sighs> I've always had an ego. But then when I got out there, I was like, oh shit, I actually have a giant. My ego is bigger than I thought. So it was getting over that and trying to, you know, have a proper mental health. Because I was like, this is, I didn't want to be negative and I didn't want to be frustrated. So it was that. Because then I would fly back to Canada and, and it would be like night and day. Of course, but, bro. You get here. You, yeah. Man, people don't know this. Anybody listening? Dave was so influential probably around the year 2011 when he was hitting this stride where you were. I remember we would go and uh, sometimes I would follow you guys. I was kind of a young comic. Yeah. But I would follow you guys into music rooms and you guys would do buzzing shows, bro. Fucking Free Times Cafe and yeah. shit. Little open mics where there was musicians and you guys would go in between you, Alex or Mark the Bonus or buzzing yeah. little crew you guys ran with. You guys took me under your wing when I was, because I was so little. But um, yeah, we had it. It was like, it was a time of like, you know, re really like, um, being creative great part in the journey bro yeah it was like we were we we had so much fun me and pat this comic pat bircher used to talk about how we you know when we first started we would just go to all these musical mics these normal rooms and and we would we were just so uh 
inundated with with being funny like i remember just like how do you get as funny as you can be yeah and almost like i wanted to do be better than pat and he wanted to be better than me we'd always kind of race to see who would get one go before each other because if one went before the other they would call everything out in the room yeah, so when you got the to the one. spot, it'd be like, you're second. You'd be like, fuck. Like, Shit. you knew the next guy was going to go on. His and just, crowd work is going to do yeah, so good yeah, off the top. And that so we, those were fun times. And then you start getting into the like the business sense of it, like yeah, auditioning of course, man. and the festivals. And then you kind of like, not that, it just kind of runs you you're, it runs you dry a bit, like creatively. Isn't that fucking it, crazy how yeah. that works? What was your first festival? Just for laughs. Wow. I think sick. so. Yeah, mine too, actually. I said like, wow, it? but it's just yeah. the way that it is. The other festivals like I mean, me a like chance. a festival that's the top three in Canada that we always yeah. Talk about. Sorry if there was a festival I went to before Holy that. Holy fuck! Like Moncton fucking, comes in fourth. They're also yeah. very respectful. We're not trying to talk shit about yeah. Moncton and Sudbury over here for crazy sake. No, Moncton, Moncton's Moncton's great because the Hubcap Comedy Festival is great because it's purely Canadian. I feel yeah, man. And then I I I would also hear Canadian comics being like, oh man, I don't know about this festival. And then I'm like. See, this is the problem. Like, you know what I mean? It's the problem is the, the problem. The problem is also maybe the, 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 the industry, but the problem is you because here is a platform that's all Canadian that's trying to treat you so properly. So sick. And you still find a negative way because it's not some, fucking, it's not Bridgetown, yeah, whatever, well, in Portland when, when it existed or here. some. So I find that festival... I always have a good time. Well, that guy Robert treats you like gold, man. He treats everyone like their puff daddy. He's crazy. Yeah, he doesn't care Yo, what level you want. You want a BMW yeah, pick yeah, you up yeah. at the hotel? Yeah. You're like, what? He doesn't. I you're guess like, he makes a suspect. You're like, what else is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah, like, he's got his little yeah. earring. He's he got always like a little knows earring. a guy. He goes, yeah, we'll take care of that. Well, yeah, we took care. <laughs> that guy took care of us, man. Listen, me and uh, Pete Johansson were in a hotel. We're getting high at like four in the morning, and we we messaged Robert like, "Yo, can anybody drive us to the store?" And he got somebody to come pick us up and yeah. drive us to the store because there's nothing open in the middle no. of fucking. Moncton, so you have to go to a 7 Eleven, buy everything you can there, pizza, shit like that. It's fucking, and go back. To, man, dude, he once was like, so Mike Wilmot, very <laughs> funny, he's on stage and he's smashing, but Mike Wilmot starts insulting the festival. And I'm like, I didn't know you could do that. And I look next to me, it's, 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 uh, it's what's it's the owner, Robert, Rob, and Rob, yeah, he has a right hand, Galant, man, Galant, so Rob's. And he's dying, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, is this normal? And then I think in between the festival Wilmot dissing the festival he hands me my payment I think or something payment for that show that's hilarious like in like in our hands like this like we're doing a drug deal <laughs> it's like, you're shaking $500 <laughs> into your hand you're like yeah like you run a festival I'm pretty sure there's like paper trail here. yeah no that guy's festival is sick man yeah He's you so do like sick, three shows man. a night you get like yeah. yeah a couple bills a show fucking insane. I think that was an impromptu show they did it because they sold every show they're like that they're and they like just that. put He's the show on nuts like that bro hey you guys want to yeah. do one more show uh so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so I think there. the first one, sorry, the first one was because I, I got Just for Laughs and then I think I did Halifax and Moncton after that. Never did Halifax. I had a, man, fuck, yeah. I mean, I had a fucking. Winnipeg was the toughest one for me to get into. Winnipeg. Yeah. Never mind Winnipeg either. I have, I have vendettas against these people. No, no, I actually don't. I heard Winnipeg is good people. No, no, they're good. I mean, like, look, well, however they are as people, that's, 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 that's between them and God. But I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> I think like the most political favorite. way you could, you Dude, could not do somebody. Dude, it's between them and God. Poor God. Like, he has to deal with these. Like, I created this guy. He's fucking a gerbil. That's me biting oh my, my God. tongue. Um, but no, um, they. it just took me forever to get in. Yeah. I remember it took me so forever to get in, bro. And by the time I wanted to get in, I was exhausted. Yeah, you were all. I was dude, like tired. You were one of those. Yeah, well, you, look, man. By the like, time hey, you got to a festival, you could easily say that you did over 2,000 comedy shows in your life. Man, yeah, like, when I got to Homegrown, I've done like, I did so many. What like, year did uh, you do Homegrown? 2011. Wow. Yeah. God, that seems like so long ago now. I know, I was like, and I was old. I was old. Like, you that's know, for you Homegrown, um, I guess, because I think they it's usually an over, booked. That's an overdue book. Do you know what I mean? They're like, oh, we, they've never got Homegrown. Yeah, I would, I would say that then and now. That was like a big time overdue. 2011 overdue, i'm 21 you get homegrown yeah you're already but i'm here. glad though they did overdo because there was no because because i would have i was not losing yo just for laughs is real nice too to all of us man like we're we're, yeah. we're, we're in that circle right now we're very blessed to be in that circle yeah get to do the shows get to do all that kind of shit <laughs> oh man it's even crazy to say now as a comic because i remember when we were young and we were taking buses to blueberry yeah. hill Imagine yeah. being like, oh, we're part of the Just for Laugh circle right now in, in the country. No, at that time, again, I, I wouldn't. I think I was just too worried about 
doing well at Blueberry Hill and then getting drunk. I never and getting thought. drunk. I know. Yeah. And then like just eating bad and then food and bad food. Yeah. It's even, I don't, I think when they overlook you, I don't think it's anything like, I don't think it's anything personal. It's not, bro. It's not, but you don't Fuck. really learn that at the beginning. Why? It, for some reason, we grew up in rap mentality. Yeah. So everything is a vendetta. These guys I didn't grew book up, me. Yeah, I yeah. know. It's like, what? They didn't book me? I ain't good enough for you? I killed yeah. over the dude that you booked, you pieces of shit. My and family then, grew up in vendetta. Like, that's how we <laughs> deal with it. So I realized that's where I got. two brothers? Two brothers and a sister. And my, my, we, we love beef. Like, I, you know, even when I listen to my family, I'm like, just let that go. And I'm like, oh, that's why. No, it's beef, I'm like, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, right now, I'm not talking to my bro or my sis, but I love them. I would never hold it, but I'm not talking to them because I got beef with them because I'm the youngest. Yeah. So they still treat me like the youngest in the family. I'm a 30 year old fucking man. Yeah. That's but I get good. treated like the kid. So they talk down to me. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? You can't, you can't talk down to me. I'm the fuck. I might be the smartest one in the fucking family. I'm a moron, but I might be the smartest one in the family, bro. And uh, like, and, and and it's nuts, man. And I'm I just, scared of my little brother, bro. Yeah, but you have like a really smart brother, right? He's like a hip hop dude he's, with like shoes. Yeah, and but shit. the youngest one is strong. I remember, I remember one <laughs> like really strong. He's one of those dudes. He, yeah, he was like someone dissed our sister, and he was like gonna go fight and protect her honor. Wow, which was, that's alpha, which shit. was reasonable. And I was trying to tell him, like, oh, hey man, you should calm down. We don't know what the law and stuff. And then he, and this is in the living room where the whole family was there. And he's like, he, I go, John, please. And he goes, nah, man, fuck that. You know what it is, bro? You know what I think it is? I think you're just a fucking pussy. Wow. And then wow. the odd part is that nobody stood up for me. No one's <laughs> <laughs> So they all agreed that, you know, this guy. Yeah, yeah. They're like, like wow, John yeah, said it. They all look right, at John yeah. like, John, no, He's right, man. yeah. Like, my mom didn't even Dave. go like, oh, no, don't say that. Yeah, and I was yeah. just kind of, oh, okay. Yo, yo trust, man. You know, in my family, you couldn't call someone a pussy because we'll all, we'll all fight each other. We'll all, we're well, we're I can't, all, I can't, we can't beat him up. We're he's scared huge. He's not even, he's huge, he's just temper is insane. Uh, no, and he can physically, he has physical strength. One it's of your not brothers like, was like within the scene for a bit. Everybody loved him. It wasn't John, it was another one. It was one. Joe. Joe's Joe. the other one, yeah. John came, Joe came when I did the Netflix. John came like the year before, maybe. Fuck. Joe's been twice, I believe. Fuck, I gotta talk all about, I gotta talk yeah. about this shit with you, okay? Because you're an insider, you have insider information. I might as well talk. So our comedian here today, we're back with Dave Merhaj. We didn't actually cut away, but it's just so people remember. Yeah. Dave is a motherfucking OG in our scene. Not only do you have, are you part of a, one of, a Golden Globe winning show on Hulu that you guys can watch, Rami. But you can also catch Dave on Netflix right now on Comedians of the World. Oh, yeah. Comedians of the World. He's under the Canada. Uh, Canada you you recorded it at Just for Laughs? Yeah, man. I didn't. Um, I, uh, yeah, it was like wild because I found out in June and they filmed in July. I, wow, I, I didn't think about it till like months later. I go, that's not enough time. <laughs> no, for a Netflix like presentation. I I, not at all. And then, But I was Thousands in need. I thought everyone else found out in June. That's what I thought. I was like, but I don't think that was the case. I don't know. But I remember um, my agent called me. He said, you, you're in the, the runnings for it. And I was like, cool. And I think I messaged him a week later. Like, yo, did we hear? And then he's like, no, let me check. And um, Alex Pavone, like I said, is funny comic. He lives in New York. I was living in New York. We're walking to, to he was doing a spot. So I go, hey, man, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to take a shit. So I go downstairs. Agent calls me. But I had to pick up because I go, it might be that news. It might so be the good news. It might be the good news. And it was the good news. But I couldn't. So we, I don't want to hang up on him because I was super excited. So I was on the toilet for 45 minutes. So now wow. Alex does not know where I am. Right? <laughs> He's so confused. I'm so confused. And I finish and I go upstairs. And Alex is like sees me in the end and he's gonna snap you know how he's fiery little, little guy right so <laughs> he's about doing? to go he goes hey, he's about to go, go what the fuck and i go i got netflix like that and he he went from what the fuck and then he, we hugged and we both cried we both started crying yeah because well people don't know man but like alex is our yeah that's yeah. right okay we, we, you guys are all part of a crew that kind of came yeah. up together as young comedians and then i sat down and we're crying and another comic, Christian from New York, walks over and he he's he walks over to be like, hey, and he goes, sorry, uh, I don't mean to interrupt. Like he thought <laughs> something awful had happened. <laughs> and, I, and I go, no, no, we good. But like my Crying. tears are coming. We oh, good. Man. Like we couldn't tell him because they they told us not to say anything. And I remember going outside, calling my family right away. And of course, it was just I got like, Netflix because I never thought I didn't even know they were doing that, doing that. And nor did I think that I was gonna get, not. I thought I, I knew I should have one, but I didn't think, you know what I mean? I didn't think I was going to get one. Man, who no. they chose other good guys too. They chose Ivan Decker, K. Trevor Wilson, and Deanne Smith from Canada. Those are the Canada, 
Canadian group. In my head, in my head, I'm like, I, I, can, I can take on one of those comics set for uh, set. For sure, you can. For sure, I, in my, can. I can never give up. And no, no, you can yeah. never not challenge something. You're like, fuck, those are powerhouses. But I, I feel no, like- you should. I think good competition is. I think healthy competition like that is 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 healthy. You know what fuck, I mean? They're like all killers, yeah. though. I watched Ivan Decker as just for laughs, and in my head, I was like, because he's a Vancouver comic, yeah. I'm trying, I'm like, this guy that good, and then he smashed like. He smashed. Right. He smashed. Yeah. We were at the Vogue uh, for <laughs> Dino Archie's show. Oh, shout out Dino Archie. Yeah, he killed me. Him. Dino and it th me, Themios and, and Dino were watching him from the side like like a sniper. But I do think it's healthy to be like, look, man, if you didn't think you was the best out of a group, then why, I don't think you should be doing this. If you don't yeah. legitimately think you're better than half of, of course, them, man. I think I'm better than ha them. But I mean, like, that's the competition. It'd be I'd be lying to you if I just sat here. Who's who's going like, I think I'm second best. Yo, lots. They're, they're, they're too scared to be like, yeah. I'm going to be a good comic. Yeah. Being a good comic, it it means smashing and instantly turning it down to humble and letting your friends like pump you up yeah instead. just it's carry just, yourself in a humble manner but i mean weird, if you're man. gonna ask me like competition wise of course. i'm be honest with it but i'm yeah. always honest like that comics are like it's not a competition you're like man you're gonna lose then you're yeah. gonna lose you're not gonna be too hungry to learn the business side of it you're not gonna get the right agent you're not gonna get the right re representation yeah, you gotta be you gotta be you, you gotta, gotta be, be on, on it bro but it was such a cool experience because you know that the um the my brother Joe came, so that was great to have him there. Oh man, I have yeah. so many family questions. Your brother Joe goes with you to Just for Laughs to film your with, with your Netflix special. But Joe, you know what sucked for Joe is like Joe, I'm not drinking. Oh no, up. and that's like the okay, man. Yeah, yeah. Anybody goes, listening, yeah. Just for Laughs is the craziest party. party. Time, right? You have a pass that says comedian. That means you can drink for free all. For as long as you're there, that's a three week it's party. A, and he missed, we couldn't, and then he'd be like, and I go, "Are you cool with that, Joe?" And he'd be like, "No, I'm, 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 I'm all right with a big bro. I'm all right with a big bro." And I'm like, I knew he wanted to get wasted, but I remember he was, uh, he's such a, because he doesn't really care about comedy. Like he hangs in the green room, like he doesn't give a fuck. But so, there's so many great comics there. Did he see anybody he that he not, liked? Dude, he was sitting next to Neil Brennan. And I, um, like he doesn't get. He's like, go, that's, that's a Chappelle show, dude. And he goes, he, might, he goes, Joe goes, oh, cool, man. Yeah. And he talked to him like they were like. Uh, wow, man! Like you created really, one of the most influential shows yeah, of the 20th yeah. century, bro. That's crazy, man. Neil Brennan, you the fuck? Yeah, like give him some sort of crazy comedy. He, props. he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't like. You know, they don't really. They're not really. No, I don't man. know. He, he, my brother obviously would know Kevin you Hart see? if he saw, but he was. Joe is very like chill, so you take him places. He's gonna be cool. He's not gonna. He's no not way, gonna man. Over like. No get way, excited. man. I'm a comic, and I get over excited just for laughs, man. You're walking through these halls do, with yeah. buzzing people. You know, like like JB Smooth walks by you, and he's like yelling, says, "What the fuck? Smell like weed in this motherfucker!" And you're like, "Holy <laughs> shit, I, that's I smell like weed." JB Smooth is yelling about me, and and, and and you're like, "Wow, crazy!" And George Wallace is there, and he's tired. You hear his boy like this, and you can just hear their actual voices. It's such a crazy thing yeah. to listen to comedians and watch them your whole life. Then one day you're at Just for Laughs. And you're taking an elevator with them to the same show. Like sometimes you'll be on the same bill as a comedian that you couldn't imagine. Did you get to work with somebody at Just for Laughs that? Because you've been on some pretty fucking all star shows, bro. So anybody you ever work with that you were kind of like, holy shit, me, Dave Mirage on the list with these guys. Uh yeah. There's like, there'd be like so so many. I I for me. Um, there was like Brent Morin, and I had seen him on like YouTube. Of course, but I don't like I don't know if I did a set. With on the same show, but just but even more, yeah, this, yeah, yeah at the he, fest. Was, he was at the fest. Um, uh, uh, shit, who am I? Fuck Ronnie Chang, but I know, I know Ronnie Chang. I know because you do cool. comedy, yeah. you, you must bump into him, but I, but I mean, it was still like I gave Ronnie a, a, a like some love too. I caught him in the elevator, I was like, dude, man, your story, who you are as a person, how you made it through comedy with, through your second language, but you're a fucking man, your yeah. OG, shit. and people don't get how smart Ronnie really is, He's, bro. Yeah, like, Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries, he hosted a gala, and then we did that. You, you did show. a Jim Jeffries gala, like yeah. he was the host. He's a host, and then uh, the gala was with uh, Christ uh, Cristel Alonso, um, Rafi, Anthony Devito, and Donnell Rawlings, and it was cool to work with Donnell all. Donnell Rawlings, yeah. another Chappelle and show. And then, uh, sorry, um, uh, Jess, not um, why am I blanking on the name now? That she's Robbie Hoffman. She's gonna snap. So Robbie Hoffman's yeah. gonna kill you. That's she like another me, expat yeah. comic living out yeah, there, yo. She's gonna, she's like, how could you forget? But those were all. That was such a fun experience. He's at sixteen shows, and that's a show I always wanted to do. Sixteen shows. Yeah. Wait, didn't you do it? Ethnic show. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, how do you know? I, I can't remember, <laughs> man. I'm like, I, I was like, man, I'm that like, sounds what? like so much. I thought I offended you. I'm like, wait, maybe he didn't do it yet. No, I did. I did at the show, <laughs> but I don't remember, man. Honestly, the it's whole thing was such shows. a fucking blur. You get there, and they treat you like royalty because you're part of the biggest show in the festival. And I remember being like, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe the big, like, you know, you're in, you're like at dinner with Bruce Hills and shit. Yeah. Like, oh my God, bro. What Dude, the Rafi is this famous Brazilian comedian and Rafi he's really tall dude tall right? dude right Rafi we're walking me Rafi Anthony DeVito and Rafi goes uh he goes oh, and we like he looks distraught and we're like are you all right and he goes I you you, you ever get into an argument with the, I'm in an argument with the prime minister of Brazil I think it's their prime minister like, <laughs> You're what? Like, what? <laughs> where he goes on Twitter and then we're like he's trying to relate to it. we're like we can't relate with you well, right? I don't know what the fuck you think is going on in other countries <laughs> but I mean but like don't... I don't know the prime minister and then it was he made me laugh like so because he would like tag us in his stories and we would get like major Brazilian followers no kidding people yeah. were just being like who the fuck is Rafi but they tagging? would write on our they would write to us or write on our post in in like we didn't know what they were saying it was me and DeVito we great were just you're confused. gonna get shot bro there's like people looking to shoot you guys now probably might get yeah and when you, as soon as you land in Rio de Janeiro one day just taxi no I heard up. there's a I heard this this person on Instagram messaged me and she's like can you tell Rami that there's like a, a there's a fan base here for his show and I was like <laughs> like I was like just pictured a bunch. But what of, is that conversation gonna be, man? I never. I told them we both laughed, but it was just like <laughs> funny that there's a Brazilian. I guess because they released it there, or I don't know. And there's just a big following. <coughs> it's funny to have like a Brazilian <coughs> following. Do I guess. they tell you guys where your biggest following is? They wouldn't tell me. I wouldn't. Right? Because that would help so much. Yeah, a lot of people love your show in Denver. You're like, oh, sick. Yeah, I'll just book go. fucking comedy works. Yeah. Well, even yeah, that would help a lot. But like. I hope everywhere. They trace that shit. They must. They have to. Yeah, they know for sure. Man, you work on a major streaming service hit show. Yeah. What is it like day to day on set, bro? Because you're... Uh, okay, bro. You're not like... You're not the number one actor. Obviously, you're not your homie. Yeah. But you're right there. You're like, man, you're his best friend on the show. Yeah. So it, it was... The first season was like very... It was like... It, it, both seasons have been exciting, but it was a lot of nerves because, you know, you never been... This is the first year. Of Where do you guys film? We filmed in New York. In New York? Like out, uh, in New York, out, outside of New York. Like and you're just, bro, you're, you're, you're living out of a hotel? You're living out of a set? Where you going? What are, what are they no, doing? No, because at the time I filmed the two seasons, I lived in New York. So, so you're just, just going back and forth. Home. Yeah, I go back home. But like, um, we filmed in Yonkers, Staten Island, uh, Hicksville, I think. Oh, we my did. God. Um, and it was... Yeah, the second season was like, you know, you got more familiar. You knew the crew now, so you come back. What's and then, up, everybody? Yeah, yeah, it's a little more jokey. Well, first year was jokey, too, but I mean the second season. But it's season, tight. I know what you mean. Yeah. Everyone's doing their job. We got to make sure we have a second season. Yeah. And then so, you come back, and then, you know, and it's such a cool set because everybody's pretty chill. Everyone's, because it starts, I think, with the with the lead cast member, and that's Rami. He's very, that's like, right. the tone of the yeah, show is very, very relaxed, and he's like, it's a good energy, so then it's seeped into everywhere. So he writes was, the show? He write him him. Uh, well, he has writer. Of like, course, he has a team, a team. Yeah, but I mean, I think it's him. Um, like, well, yeah, he's he's. I don't know how many people are in the writers' room, but I mean, they They're do probably like, around ten. You know. Who knows? You know, you, they they got their little yeah. team. I hung out there once. It's a whole different yeah. vibe than stand up comedy. People don't know to that. like write or acting to write. Yeah, it's they. A writer's room isn't the same as like a bunch of comics shooting around ideas. I don't know. It's just different to me. Just man. Go, yeah, I've only been in one. I only did sketch rooms back yeah. in the day when people would meet up for that kind of shit. When I was trying to be somebody like, and I didn't know any better. And I was like, these aren't my people. I'm no, like, I, I don't like writing in a room for months. No. I, I, if it was my own show, I would like that. That's different though. Cause yeah. you're the head writer. Everyone's yeah. running ideas through you and yeah. your cool creative juice gets to twist it. Yeah. Choo, choo, choo. But That's I, different, bro. Guess writing. I don't know, but who knows? I, you know, I might. Yeah. Guess writing is different, bro. Cause you have to write in your homie's voice now. Yeah. And then how the fuck are you supposed to focus on your life? Well, he's not going to have me write on Rami. No, right? Because just based on my text messages, I think I lost the job. <laughs> so you kind of didn't give me the job. Uh, I Dave, I'm having a hard time understanding exactly what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, he's so well-spoken, very, like, yeah, deep, philo philosophical, that kind of shit. And he's known me for, like, 10 years. Like so a he's known you, because so he knows that who you are as a person, bro. Completely. We would hang out and stuff like that. We used to stay at his crib before, we, like, in 2015, 16. You guys are about the same age? No, he's 28. I'm no 40, way. He's yeah. so fuck. He's younger than me. Yeah. That's brutal. I ain't yeah. doing shit with my girl. This motherfucker's winning gold, golden gold. Well, he, he he told me he got so when he was like nineteen, he got his first 
TV gig in LA. That's how crazy. And he flew from New Jersey and he lived in LA. We're living in the wrong country. Bro. Yeah. Listen, he's got wait. a very yeah, and he's and he's but he's also like very like when he when you speak to him, he, it's, sorry, he's like he's not young. He's got like an old man spirit. The whole show, he seems yeah. like an old man, bro. The whole yeah. time, he's always very like, Ugh, guys, oh fuck, yeah, like, what oh. do we do? And Mo's yelling at him, and Mo, Mo's yelling at you. Mo yells at me in real life too. So <laughs> like right. so there's no switch. This is no like when they go cut. Mo's still going like, what the fuck are you doing? So it's not like a. In a, not in a mean way. I mean, like this, our, is, our dynamic is just the same dynamic on that show that it would be off camera. That's why it's like it's. That's it, why people. Yeah, I was gonna say gravitate that's why it works. to it. That's yeah, because exactly, it's not bro. fake. It's like that's how we act. When I watch show. you on screen, bro, and I've only watched, and I'm gonna be honest, two episodes and all the clips that you post. It's so funny. I'm not deep into the show myself. I wouldn't. Yeah, it's all okay, good. bro. But and uh, it's because I don't have Hulu. But uh, it's not the point. When I watch the show, I know you personally, and I and I lose myself in watching you be who you are on the screen you're not an actor bro it's you and your friends and and it's who we yeah. used to be at fucking some late night diner and shit yeah. like that and it's crazy to watch that bro you must be proud when you is it, it okay i mean let me rephrase that is it easy for you to be proud of your work or do you still find it hard to watch yourself on screen no, now I can watch. I, I can watch it now. It looks nice, yeah, man. It, lo- it looks it like, you know, I took classes, obviously. I, um, Do they make you take classes? Or you just no, I took so classes with uh, um, Yes, and he, he runs this thing called Film Club, and he's from the UK, so he brought it over to New York, and um, I went and did it for the first before the first season started. That's how I met Steve, who's uh, one of the friends on the show. Like, he took the same class. Straight up acting class. Straight up acting class. And then, it, and then I took more classes with Yes, and... And uh, it was very helpful because I. Oh yeah, you're so that. good, Dave. Yeah. I, I bro, you don't. Even but I've always wanted to act when I was younger. So it, it, there's this weird proud feeling that I feel, bro. Only because I'm your friend. I'm much younger than you. You were already established when I started, but now I get to watch you as this weird outsider friend and fan. And, and uh, even the other day, I tagged you in a post from when I'm 21 years yeah. old. I was already, uh, bro. You already know. So this is coming from a true place, man. It's so cool to see you succeed on that level, bro. Where the American market now knows who you are. Where you're on a, you're not on a show, bro. You're on a fucking hit show that the lead actor just won a Golden Globe for yeah. his acting. You know how much eyes, you know how much attention that brings to your shit. Yeah, and, it's like uh, it's like funny. It's it's interesting. Sometimes I'll be, you'll just do like a meeting maybe, and then they'll like, like drift off themselves into talking about the show. But like they'll be like, it's like not emotional, but it's like long they're like uh, like they're going into it and you forget you're like oh man i gotta be i gotta be prop not that i would be disrespectful i mean i, know, I have to it's have easy this to be yourself, i have to be the, I have, now we're talking about religion you know what i mean and they think Shh. i'm muslim but i'm not i'm christian i'm a catholic you know lebanese from canada it's a whole I, different like, thing well i mean it's just funny to like you see people kind of like geek out over something and that you're in is is like is are you are you guys the first middle eastern actor driven show where like the descendants of people from the middle east i think so i think there was something that came out like that you know? like i i fact yeah. i'm sure there was something that tried to break a barrier and we may have never heard of it he break i think with the what he this is for me listening to rami interviews you know and like kind of piecing together what he says it's like a it's like a cool show about you know like it shows both sides. It doesn't show, it doesn't just only show the good side. Yeah. It shows like also all our faults or whoever's faults are. And then they don't shy away from that. And I think that's what makes it, it, it makes it not cookie cutter. It's like very like honest. That's in the writing on purpose. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I think they're very self-aware of that. And I think that's why people, I connect with it and I'm on it. Like I watched the mom, there's, there's a mom episode and it's like, it reminds me of my mom. So there's a lot of, um, and it is awesome to be a part of something that you can be proud of. And like when someone's like, are you on yeah, a show? Yeah, I know. You know, sometimes you get on a show and you're like, this show's whack. You know it in this your head. It's whack. whack. But I you can't say anything, this. right? You got to be like, hey, I'm on a I'm just cool happy show. to be working, bro. Yeah, you say that. You're like, yeah. But, you know, I could be like, no, I legitimately um, am excited all the time to be a part of this thing that's that, you know, that that started out. I started oh. out with it like day one. Season one, bro. Yeah, yeah like the first day. We filmed was in the diner. And that was like two years ago. The diner's uh, a great place, man. Yeah. It's it's been used. Well, okay. 
You know, I'm so I'm such a fucking fan at, at the same time. Such Dude, the a diner to tell you the diner the the I think we met the owner last this year. <laughs> That's it. You no, know, we met the owner for the first time. He came out and he goes, we were filming. He goes, I'm the owner. I'm like, oh shit! You forget that there's this is a real diner. This is a real diner. Yeah, like, like, we're not on set. Oh, oh, this is the owner, and he had like a. He's he he. I think he had a phone that had no camera. Like you think he might have had a like a, like a flip phone. A flip phone. That's how like this diner is like hilarious because there was one scene the first year I was filming and I had to stand outside and someone has to cue me in right and there's a gas station with a picnic table and these the older like guys like white guys Spanish guys started um, they're sitting there drinking and then one guy goes uh, what the fuck you think's happening over there and he goes ah don't go over there Bobby you don't go over there he goes nah fuck it I'm gonna see but I can't. I, they're gonna, I gotta wait till they go action. So I'm like, oh, shit. Here then, comes something. Dude, they came over. The one guy comes over. He goes, what are you doing? And I'm in like, a, I play a doctor. So I'm in the, the uniform. And he just kept yelling at me. And I have to stand. I go, oh, fuck's sakes. And I finally had to come in. I go, dude, I don't want to be a snitch, but these guys are heckling outside. And then, <laughs> wow, that's and the I never greatest. Wanted to be there. I hate being a snitch. Now the truth comes out. Yeah, this is who you really this are. Is who I, yeah, so I am. So the cops came in. <laughs> Like, cause, no, because they didn't understand what a set is. They were like, they were just so blown away, and they just kept heckling. This is a TV show, right yeah, here. Yeah, and then they ask those questions. What fucking show? And then you're like, Rami on Hulu. It isn't out yet. And they're like, What the fuck is Hulu? Like, it's like kind of <laughs> like. So then you're like, oh, I gotta explain to this guy what streaming services is. Yeah, you, da you download a service. It's eight ninety nine a month USD. <laughs> man, I gotta explain this. Oh, man. That's so great, man. Yeah, and he gets it. He lets us improvise too. Like it's so fun. Like you get to improvise. I mean, yeah, the the, the dude who's the main actor who's sitting in front of the camera is the head writer who's the creator. He gets to pull those kind of strings. Well, I mean, like, sometimes man. they don't like. Sometimes you know, there's like ego. You don't know how you know how they react. So you know, we just I feel calm. Like I can ad lib a line, and he's like, yeah, yeah, keep that. How about you add this? And then it's like collaborative, which is super dope. Of course, in the moment, things seem different. I hope more that 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 is the art when you are creating something for on the screen. I feel if yeah. everything is just off the script and very it's very boring. Very nobody writes a script perfectly like a conversation in real life. Well, he would tell me like they would tell me the other writers would be like, go through it. Just tell me if you sound like this. If Do you, you sound like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can change it. And the best part is also making. Uh, my favorite was like improvising and making the the whole set laugh. Yeah, yeah. That was like what? my favorite. If if I if I they went cut and then people just started dying, I'm like, oh, sick. Shit. That's All like right. my favorite part of filming, buddy. That's the inner stand up comic in you. You're yeah, like, yeah, it was man. like a very comic thing to do. Like Comics if I can get make. Rami, if I can break Rami. One time I broke um, Mo because uh, there's a scene where uh, uh, I think he just. He, they didn't use the ad lib obviously, but it was coffee. And he goes, I'm like, uh, man, I'm going to pay for this. He goes, nah, I'm a, I think most of I'm going to put my dick, uh, in, in the coffee. That's and I go like, as I go fine. And I drink it and they uh. go cut. And then everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like the riff was bad. Uh. And Rami's like, what are you drinking? Cause he was like, so I bombed the riff, but I just panicked and I go, I'll drink it. And then just having everyone, Rami's like, dude, what do you, what is that? What was that? I go, I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> man, how great is that, man? You get to be on set, get to have fun, get to test shit. You get to live in an experience right now, man. Yeah, it's, this it's is such a, such a, even like, I think about it all the time of like being able to, and also learning, you know, like learning. I've always wanted to act too, since I was like 14. Like I always wanted to do stand up then act. I what never really talked like, about though? it. You have old school parents, bro. How, how hard Oh, they were super supportive. They're still, yeah. My parents are not like, like typically sometimes Middle Eastern families would be like, you know, we want you, we don't want you to do this and that. My mom was just like, go to school and get an education and then you can do what you want. And then I did that. And then um, what's even hilarious is like, I didn't want to do marketing. I didn't want to go to college um, or at university. And my mom was like, go to college. So I went to St. Clair College and I did one year of uh, um, advertising because I was waiting for my best friend to come. But he 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 didn't go to uh, college right away. What so did he do? Just took a he year went off? To, he took a year off. So then I go, okay, his shit. name was Hugo. So like, Hugo, I'll wait for you. And then Hugo, he, so he goes, I'm going to take marketing. So I jumped out of advertising. So... I go to the, the whoever the, at the program is. I'm leaving advertising. They were like, what? You have good grades. Why? I go, uh, my friend Hugo's. I think I said my friend Hugo is coming and I want to be with together with him for marketing. 
<laughs> so I leave at, but also advertising was very tough. I didn't want to, I knew I wasn't going to put in the that time. World is, yeah. It's very intense. So I get to marketing. Hugo drops out first semester. No, he does first and drops out. So I'm like in marketing now. Fuck, I didn't want to do this. So I meet like some cool homies and we stick it out. And then there's the last year and you have an option of not coming back and just graduating. And my friend Jad, the Lebanese guy was like, dude, he goes, dude, come back. I'll help you. I'll help you. I'm like, no, nah, man, I don't want to do it. He goes, come on, man, I'll help you. I'll, you know, we'll work together. And I go, he goes, just come on, I'll help you. And you just tell me stories. And I'm like, okay. And then I graduated. And then like years later, a student that we went to school with submitted me to a St. Clair College alumni program. That's hilarious. And to get like, like they recognize the alumni. And then of he's course. like, look, man, I know you're not doing marketing, but comedy is kind of like you're marketing yourself. That's crazy. Dude, then they promote it. They, I made the, 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 alumni? the alumni and I'm on the hallway. <laughs> no way. As somebody who attended the school. Schools, if you go to St. Clair, you'll be like, oh, this guy. But I just found it so funny because I never wanted to go to school. I, it was just my mom wanted me to graduate. I almost like left three times but then would i ever have thought i would be recognized as an alumni i'm He's alumni like, here pal now you got to flex your chest when you're there i'm <laughs> alumni pal do they give you a jacket like a letterman that's what the no they did get they do hook you up though i just i talk to the guy all the time like the head they'll guy. hook you up bro you're alumni. They'll hook you up, yeah he's like uh but it was just funny because um i just didn't think george rabbit was the guy who 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 went i went to school with who was the reason it happened he pushed me forward he told them like you should have this guy I okay. saw him actually at the, uh, uh, he was at the Nasty Show last summer in Montreal, but he was on in Montreal for business and he was, I'm coming to see you. He was Dave. I go, holy shit, it's been a while. He goes, yeah, I'm coming to see you tomorrow, but I'm watching the Nasty Show now. That's and, the best. And then, yeah, so I have to thank him. Man, isn't that really cool? I yeah. thought it was cool because my mom, my did, mom. Did, 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 does your mom know that you're an alumni? Did she get it? Well, like, we had a weird, there was a banquet, but then when COVID happened, they had to cancel it all. It but they were going to do April. the thing where they bring you up. Oh, Dave Mirage, yeah, yeah. comedian, Arthur, talk about your accomplishments. Uh, Arthur Simeon, comedian from, from here, from Toronto, he was going to come. He go, We were going to wear suits. That is so fucking Arthur hilarious, <laughs> man. Dude, you're really cool like that with your family, bro. I'm going to bring something up yeah. kind of personal. You brought your dad to the Junos. Well, uh, I'll be honest. My dad, first of all, doesn't know what the Junos are. I know. That's like me bringing yeah, my dad no, to the jewels. You had no idea. Yeah, he yeah. would just be like, "What? Well, what is this?" Why? Well, I wasn't. I originally, I'm in a group chat with my sister and my two brothers. I said, yeah. "Who wants to come to the Junos?" And my sister goes, "Take daddy sick. My dad has cancer, right?" So she's like, "Take him. He he like he'd like enjoy it." And my mom, I was gonna take my mom, but then my mom was like, "No, you know." My mom always goes like, "No, then then you'll have to pay for a hotel." Like, well, who cares? I yeah, told you yeah, I have the yeah. money, and she goes, "No," and then it's too much to argue. So my it was just my dad. But I was worried my dad has to take a train by himself, right? I don't know why I don't think. Where's he, he coming from? From Windsor. But this guy, wow. this guy can go. This guy, I guess, if he drops you off w once, he can remember the route. Yeah, my dad's like that. Without the phone or a map, he That's, can remember. So I don't know why I got worried, uh, but I was very scared because he's like eighty, like almost, so. I pick him up at the train station and then uh, I go, uh, I call him Bob. So Bob, how was it? He goes, it's good, man. It's good. He's like, I've never been on a train. I go, have never been on a train? He goes, not once that and a bus. Wow. He's never ridden, which I was like, uh, what? <laughs> but then I realized he, he drives, probably no. drives. Yeah, so yeah. So he moved to Windsor and he drove. Like, why would and he, he stayed locally there, just learned it? Well, no, he would like, he would drive around other places, but he never took a train for some odd reason. No, so, no, I don't think my dad's ever taken a train. Taken no. a train. But he was hella geek to be there when he got there, but he just didn't. He was funny because he would talk to anyone. Like, you could leave him by. Yeah, he, he doesn't know who, statuses of anybody, so he's just going to talk to a person. talking like, to uh, CBC interviewers. Yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah, But he's interjecting. Like, they're talking to me, and he's like, you know, this guy he used to play soccer. <laughs> this guy's like, okay, man. Dad, man, no, don't yeah. do it. What are you talking about? The people want to know. <laughs> no. This guy, I know your hobbies. But he, the, my favorite is Sophie. Buttle, uh, who won the Junos this year, uh, me and her uh, her boyfriend, uh, Mace, uh, am I saying the last Mace name? Mace Galoni. Right? Galoni. He, we went in to get McDonald's, and then when we got back in the car, she goes, Dave, your dad just told me about the wars in the Middle East. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and I was like, Dad, why? <laughs> we took a cab, and the cab driver was from some, so I think he was from Croatia, Great. and I thought my dad and him were going to hug. Cause they were connecting. Yeah, and I go, I go, Bob, we gotta get in the house. And he goes, yeah, I thought he was gonna ask for his number, but he had like a great. He didn't know. He didn't know. The funniest thing to me, though, the the whole thing is that he cried. But he, when I got back, when I won, he collected his tears so quick. 
Yeah, of course he did. Because he went like, I go, I saw him crying and he goes, uh, and he was back to normal. Um, but he, the best part of it was, uh, um, he, <laughs> we're at the night of the, act, the Junos on, and the lights are out and they came back from commercial and there's this figure that starts walking up and you can see the lights are coming on and people start to clue in of who this is. Yeah. Place goes nuts. And then, um, and I go, holy shit. And my dad, uh, it's Sting. And I go to my dad. My dad is like, who's this guy? Yeah, and I, who's this guy? Your know, dad. <laughs> the place is like loud. And he goes, Sting. Like, you just, you know, just, just couldn't not. What are you talking? What's Sting? What's Sting? <laughs> The police, the police he is here. Know, yeah. Like, oh, you can't. That's he was worse. like, he he like enjoyed it. He really loved uh, to watch. He we were at a nightclub after, and he was like, I he go, went to with you to the bro, club. This guy was out to three in the morning. I'm like, do you want to go home? And he got mad at me after a while. He was, okay, stop Dave, asking yeah, me. Stop, yeah, ask. stop asking me. I'm here. He's like watching the band, and I walk over. I go, do you know these people? It was I think he's from Windsor. <laughs> I go, I don't know. Did you ask him? <laughs> you know, I seen him. Windsor. I seen him. I love yeah. laws. I seen him. So what kind of accent does your dad have? That kind of like that. I don't like know thick thinking. light. Wait, 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 like thick like light. How does See, he say your name, Dave? He goes Dave. Dave. But he um. But it's weird because he's been in this country for so long. I know. My dad's been in Canada way weird. longer than he was ever in Portugal. My dad's been yeah. in Canada like 45 years. Weird. In Portugal like 20 years. He, was out, like, you know. he just has that. And his um, his sisters have it and his brother have it. It's just... He had he had a he Yeah, man. He had a really good time, I feel. Like he would call my... He's like a really huge bond with my youngest niece. So he'll call them. That's and, so sweet. And he'll be like, uh, uh, Katie... And he's like, talk. I hear him in the other room. I'm like, this guy's getting emotional. Like, yeah, yeah. So funny. And then I think he told my mom he missed her. No, yeah. <laughs> he started dying to myself. <laughs> I don't know why. He goes, uh, Layla, I, I miss you. And I'm like, Pfft. like I was trying not to laugh. Like, what are you doing? He can't, bro. Because I never heard him talk like that to her. He just doesn't. They don't talk like that. My no, mom, yeah. my mom said that my dad's never said I love you to her. I was like, what? Yeah. She's like, you think your dad gonna say I love you to me? Are you crazy? Why would he gonna say? I was yeah, like, yeah. man, what are you fucking nuts? <laughs> Did you just say why would he say that to you? You're his wife. Oh yeah, I was gonna say these guys. But that's are, how they got by. I feel. Of course, that's how they so got, they got by, by, bro. You yeah. know, it wasn't that you had no time to be like, say, I love you. You like, crazy uh, man. Bob's been with me for two years. He hasn't said I love you. I think I'm going to ask him to marry me, man. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, but also they were probably trying to raise a family. I think. Of course. Yeah, well, no why did you guys, they, did they choose Windsor or when they came here as a, as immigrants, that's just where they ended up. No, my, my dad came. Um, oh, my dad came when he was like late twenties mm -hmm. and my sister came. Oh, sorry. Not my sister, my mom came. Like when she was younger, they didn't meet in Lebanon. They met in Shut Windsor. up. So my mom used to uh, work with his sister. So he was trying to ask her. He was like, "Yo, what's up? Uh, I want to holler at. <laughs> I want to holler. He wanted to holler at my mom. They went on a date, and he ghosted her on the second date. No way. And, her, and my his sister was like, "You're not ghosting her. You're gonna go out with her. This is a good girl. You can't do yeah. that. And then they, he married her after like maybe two hangouts. Man, imagine how crazy that was to be Lebanese, come here to another country, you don't speak the language yet, and you're so lucky because you get to meet another Lebanese chick, and then you almost ghost her, and the yeah. sister's like, no, 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 no. No, his sister was like, you're not, we're not, we're not doing nah, this. Nah. Yeah, we're not doing this, buddy. You got to find yourself a lady and get the fuck out. Yeah. Did they all live together when they came here? No, like, no, my dad lived with his, his one sister. And they were and, so, yeah. And they, the, the sister moved to Windsor and moved everyone in. Moved everyone over, I think. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my aunt did that too. My yeah. aunt comes here first with her husband. And then they start fucking feeding everybody whatever the fuck yeah. it was at the time. My mom calls And my her, mom so. came when she was a kid and they were poor. She had to drop out of, of school. Your mom came to Canada as a kid? Yeah, and she they had to drop out of school. All the siblings. In, in no Windsor? Money. In Windsor. She told me, she said, I wanted to be a teacher. Of course. She, has she, had sort to of drop a, yeah. she dropped out of 14. She has an accident or no? No, 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 she no, came here too it. young. Yeah, yeah, she came out. No, actually. you shake that shit. She shook it like big time, man. She call you Dave, like just Dave, no Dave. No, she'll call me Habibi, which is an Arabic. Habibi. Or, hello, hello means like beautiful. Yeah. Or she'll be like, yeah, she'll be like David if she's like. Sometimes if she's angry. Is your full name David? David, yeah. David Mraj. Dawood is like if you say it in so in Arabic. She'll Dawood? say it sometimes. Yeah, she'll be like Dawood. So if you went back to Middle East, that's what they would call you, Dawood. They probably won't call me anything, right? Because to them, I'll look like I might look Jewish. I don't know. <laughs> no one's gonna. I always like make fun of this comic in Calgary. He's like uh, Italian. He's like half Italian, half white. He's like, I I feel like white people do this sometimes. Um, 
and they go like this. They go, oh, shit, you're Lebanese? He goes, did you been to the Lebanese side of Calgary? I go, uh, no. He goes, you want to go? I go, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> there they're going to show up and they're going to fucking it's happy. carry me on uh, there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude. And then they go, ah, I don't see. Some guy's going to come out of a church. <laughs> he has arrived. Dude. <laughs> Dude this, because uh, when you see another Lebanese guy, he's he, and you go, like this, you go, hey, I'm Lebanese. He goes, okay, man. Yeah, I know. What the fuck? Do you want a, you want a sandwich? Like, get the you fuck out of line. I can't, I can't agree with that because I'm Portuguese. If you meet other Portuguese people, for some reason, they get rowdy. They're like, hey, bro, all right, what are you doing? But that's your, but that's, you see, that's your friend. I know. That I know your <laughs> friends, though. I don't know why, man. We're gonna we have to wrap this up, but we're gonna get into a quick conversation about man. When you were when we were when I was a younger comic, you guys knew that I kind of I always hung out with really hood people. I was involved in drugs and shit like that, so uh, <laughs> which I which I um, I was excited about. I don't know why, man, because it was because it, it, my like, friends were mental. Like I wasn't personally mental, but the people that I hung out with were on a next level mental. Remember one time that you told me a story that you were driving in the neighborhood with somebody and you honk, somebody was driving and they honked oh, at somebody no, and you. a guy got out of the car and was ready to fight you guys. And you guys called me like, do you know whose car? That? And I, I did. Yeah. This guy, dude. It, 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 oh, man. So this comic a friend of mine is driving and he and he doesn't let like this guy's trying to cut in, cut in like, you know, he's in front of him and he cut, doesn't let him go. And I'm like, oh, that was kind of like. Crappy on our move. Yeah, dick move. And then the guy sped up behind us. And then my boy just turned right. He's like, I lost him, right? And then he turns to the left. And he reversed. The guy went all the way around and started revert. He reversed into us. And Amazing. we stopped the car. And uh, the comic with me, he's like freaking out. I'm freaking out. He goes, what the fuck are we going to do? I go, I don't know. I don't know. And then the guy's trunk pops. So I go, oh. And then I go, reverse. And then the other comic's like, call the police. Call the I go, tell him what? I don't, I don't know what the fucking car is. We get to the comedy bar and we're shook. And then you, I think we saw you and I'm like, I'm like, yo, Mike, this guy did this and this. And then I think you went, what's the make of the car? And I think the other comic knew the make of the car and you went outside and then oh, we're like, we made some phone calls, or phone calls. Like yeah. yeah. And then I and go, we dude, we're out exactly who it was. You came back in and you're like, that's this zone. So you guys are good because we lived in the neighborhood and I, we were scared to go back to that neighborhood. But that Man. happened to me when I lived at like DuPont and Lansdowne all the time. Like oh, kids man. would ride their bikes and they'd be like, one kid once he rode by me and he circled back and he goes, he goes, uh, like he's, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm gonna get robbed <laughs> midday. He goes, Mike, he goes, you comedy? <laughs> you like comedy? Like he's just riding his bike. I go, yeah. He goes, yeah, Mike Rita's boy, and he just kind of spin off. Like his bike. Go, oh, okay. Well, that's for real, man. People don't know, man. Like I don't live in the city anymore. I'm a country kid now, but man, like man, I'm telling you straight up. When we were growing up in the hood. I was the only person who ever made it into entertainment. Lots of my friends wanted to be rappers, but they never did shows. Yeah. They never got anywhere. But right out of high school, I started doing stand-up comedy. And so I was lucky enough, man, because I would always bring people. People would book me on shows that I wasn't ready for because I could fill it with like 10 people. So I got to do shows with you guys right away. And you guys all knew me as this weird kid who could bring people who was just young comic. But eventually you guys realized how hungry I was for it. So you guys let me in. You guys let me in that little circle. Yeah. Thank fucking God. But... Uh, yeah, man, and those guys were fucking nuts. But when they see you guys, they didn't know what level of comedy you were at. Yeah. So they always pictured you guys on this pedestal. Yes. Even when you were young, D Mike Reader's boy, Dave. Dave, yeah, you're yeah, funny. You talk fast. Yeah, and then they just ride away. <laughs> they just remember one small thing about you. Say, you were yelling. You were yelling? Bro, hilarious. We saw you at Vapor Central. I think I told someone that I wanted to stop after MTV Live and just <laughs> and then own a convenience store and just live off of Mike Rita's friends enjoying yeah, my comedy. Coming in and be like, Mike yeah, Rita, yeah, you know yeah. Mike Rita, and don't that's, you? That's how I would that's how I was gonna end See, it. See the thing is to those guys, because you're so high up and that you know me, that they know you. It's beautiful. It's crazy. It's beautiful. I, I reminded me of, of my hometown. So Dude, yeah, it's all were so we were so young. Man, people don't know me, but I started stand up comedy when I was like 19, 18, yeah. 19, yeah. And, and you guys were getting me into shows that I wasn't allowed in. One time you and uh, Mark DeBonis let me into Fox and the Fiddle. I was climbing up the fire escape because the security wouldn't let me in. And I was booked on it. And I didn't want Jason Blanchard, who was a hard ass, yeah. to think that I had canceled the show. I think I was there. So you're you're talking yeah. to Mark. And Mark turns around. You know how Mark is? He, you remember when he was kind of fat Mark? So yeah. He was kind of like, what, what the fuck is this rumbling oh, yeah, noise yeah, yeah. over here? And he helps me out of a fire escape because I can't get out. 
And uh, <laughs> I do remember that. And you were kind of talking to somebody. You came around. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? You're climbing into the gig. <laughs> Just ask one of us at the door to let you in. I was like, the, the security guard won't let me in. You're like, what the that fuck? That security guard was tough. I know yeah, those black security. dude. He's yeah, a hard yeah. ass, bro. I begged him. I'm like, please, you don't get it. In comedy, it, this is a room that is hard to get booked on. I got booked on because I begged him. And uh, yeah, he wouldn't let me I in. I do remember all. I want to say, too, before we leave your one boy, I'll never forget him. I think he would wear contact lenses. Yeah, yeah. He looked like like kind of devilish and insane. He, he had kind of like... He, that guy, I was like, that's the shooter. Dude, <laughs> that guy, Tony Fresh is his name. Yo, yeah, Tony Fresh. Shooter right there. I used to I used to run with a guy who used to shave his head. Yeah, wear white <laughs> bandanas and white like. And he was uh, wearing all white sometimes. All white. He would wear all white. And uh, yeah, and he'd be terrifying because he had a, he he had this rough face already. It's yeah. kind of like just kind of fucking. And he then he would dress up in all this gangster clothing. And we used to run with guys like that man on purpose because we 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 were just trying to. We thought we were gonna be drug dealers, bro. I thought that I was gonna be flipping weed and coke. I thought I was gonna be caking for the rest of my life like that, and I was gonna hold. It. And then I I became an artist. I became a comic, yeah. and I was like, I, I I like comedy. And and you can't be a you can sell drugs in comedy, but you can't be a drug dealer, bro. No. Because then everyone knows you as a drug dealer, not as a comic. And I don't want that. I don't want them to know me as a dealer before I'm a comic. Also, bro. you can't be too silly as a drug dealer. That's right. You yeah, can't, you be, can't yeah, be. Yeah, you can't be too silly. You can't be in. flipping you can't do coke. a riff, dude. Bro, <laughs> one time, you know, Joe Buxton, that guy caught me selling blow on on uh, Bloor and Ossington. It was a rainy night and and comedy bar closed, and he was walking by, and I scared the shit out of him. He walked by, and I was kind of in like one of those little bar nooks, you know, like that lead up to yeah. some place. I was just kind of standing out of the rain. And I went, "What up, Joe Buxton?" And I, you know, I, was, I had like my hoodie down and shit. It was like this, and he was like, "What do I?" know you and i was like yo it's just me mike rita hey what's up man <laughs> you know i went from like drug dealer to like hey i'm actually a comedian don't forget that man dude buxton would have been so scared he was so yeah. scared bro but it was like two three in the morning it was raining he was in his own world man no joe buxton looks like an account that got yeah, fired yeah and he's like yeah time, and he's dude. the straw and yeah. he's got a pistol in his like oh, briefcase. Wait, yeah, he's gonna, oh, like, wait till i get to the post office <laughs> Fuck, okay, we'll wrap this shit up, man. You know, I could talk... Well, this is part one of, like, another episode. We'll do another one, man. Because I didn't get into everything. I didn't get into your influential years in Toronto comedy yeah. and how th there were, like, ten comics who, who like, kind of hover... Like, bro, like, you were some sort of Earth comic, and they were moons, and they were learning about you and taking your shape, and it's like they could have stepped in and been you, and then some of them separated and became their own comics, and then some of them... I don't even know what they do nowadays. But man, no, there was like it was such a fun time. It was very like, bro, you were the yeah. most influential comic in this country. I used to hear stories when I first started in comedy that Mark Breslin wouldn't let people hang around Norm Macdonald because they would copy Norm's cadence. That should yeah. have happened in like 2011. You shouldn't have been allowed to talk to nobody. <laughs> yeah. You should have just been put in like a little fucking cube and brought from mic to mic because people started like yeah. stealing your cadence. People were doing this who had no fucking idea why they were yeah, even doing yeah. this. Yeah, because then it dirtied up what I was doing. Yeah, that's right. It clouded. Like, it like, what are you? Is, is Dave's original then? Is Dave even? And then it's like, wait. And then the best was you would see okay like they would be your opening acts and they would try to be the dave and then they couldn't be dave and you would come up and headline and you were already a headliner you would never do anything but headline you wouldn't host you just fucking smash bro and you would come in and you could see you knew why you were doing this because they were your fucking moves yeah, yeah, and these guys didn't get it they didn't get where the punchline was they don't get that you're supposed to kind of be timid sometimes and then yeah. when shit gets real you know i don't know man it was very very flattering uh, yeah that must have been so trippy flattering. Shit, bro, so and trippy it was very like Oh, yeah, man. I don't. Ultimate. It's very grateful for the. Yeah, like, man, that's you, a cool feeling, bro. It's such a and yeah, you're just doing something. You, you know, I was just trying to be funny and being and ultimately try to do what I wanted to do. But then it to was have crazy, bro. To to do that is such. It's a, because everybody thought your style was going to be the next big one out of the country, and obviously we were right. You, you're now successful. You've done multi television appearances. You're working on a TV show. We were correct. The stardom was there. We could all see it. And I think everybody, bro, they were trying to leech it a little bit before it was gone. And then, bro, by what, a couple of years later, you were gone to the States. And we never saw you again until you came back <laughs> as a fucking, you know, on a TV show that just won a bunch of awards. You're working with one of the most talented dudes in the business right now as his right-hand man on his TV show. You're like a Kramer or a George Costanza, bro. I'll take uh, George. You're going to take George? Just because of Is that, Kramer. Yeah, 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 you can't yeah, do I the can't. Kramer. That's I'll take Because Moe's yeah. loud. Mo gets, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Moe's Kramer. Kramer yeah, yeah, so. Man, okay. This is part one. I'll, 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 we'll do I'll another do, one. I'll do a part two for sure. Bro. Oh, thank my you God. Yo, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to this episode. Our, our guest today is Dave Merhaj. Our weed supplier is My Supply Co. Um, fuck, I forgot my code. But by the time this episode's up, I'll post the code right here. And I'll edit in some audio so you can get the code. I think it's Rita the Human 2020. If you go to MySupplyCo.com, 
gmail.com and use the code read of the human 2020 you get 15 or 20 percent off your order um other than that man thank you so much dave that was great buddy i think i got high off the second hand you better yeah, have yeah, or did, it's yeah. not a fucking I'll tell you that. I, I realized as i was answering i go i'm stoned but it was a good time <laughs> no it's not it's that rambling feel man it's because i i don't know man i just stare at you while you're doing it we're gonna play the credits now right the credits start playing always oh, man you know we're talking i gotta like straighten out the papers oh. and shit no, it's oh, good. Yeah, yeah, good. we're good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>